hello guys I'm going to discuss here how can you create the refresh token and use that created refresh token with the access token to get new access token and the new refresh token so before proceeding I would like to request to subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed yet and you can also find the project downloading link so in the description so you can download the project or uh, you can also find the link of uh, github so you can just clone that repository into your local folder and run your run the project okay so now let's proceed for the demonstration so before the demonstration i would like to show you that you can see here now the login screen so this is the process of login whenever a user logs in into the application so user first get the access token with the refresh token okay access token is having the short expiration time and the refresh token is having the long express expiration time so in i i mean the short expiration time is like one hour or two hour or less than that okay and the refresh token long expression time that means 15 days or one month or maybe six month it depends according to the requirement of the project okay and it depends on the security okay so in the same way the refresh token will accept the access token as well as the refresh token in the request parameter and it will return the same thing access token and the refresh token but when you will get the new ex it means after requesting the refresh token api url you will get the new access token as well as the new refresh token okay so let's proceed so now you, here you can see there are the some steps you can see in the notepad here so the first thing we need to create refresh token model so i have done all the things i will just show you how i have done the things in the project okay so you can see here class library dot model project at the okay and here inside that i have created the db model here you can see this is the refresh token okay this is basically the refresh token class so here is the same class which i have used okay so now you can see the id is the unique key so here is the primary key uh, which will be created the primary key column with the name of id in refresh token table and you can see that here in the database this is the id and it is the primary key with identity implementation or you can see you can see like auto increment okay by one and same okay and the same in the same way token is also a column year beauty id also column and create date time expression date time used invalidated user id and here at the last you can see at line number 29 here the foreign key reference so uh, i have implemented the foreign key reference from the identity user table okay so the user id inside this table inside this refresh token table you can see here the user id here okay just a minute okay so the user id is here you can see and in the last the user id column right so the user id is here being referenced from the identity table or identity model table so here you can see the, in the last your id is foreign key and it is connected and here you can check inside the Con not in the constant sorry and the indexes you can see here refresh token user id is the foreign key right which is non-unique and non-clustered okay and also there is one primary key constant applied here in the same table and this user id column right is referencing with the with this column is pnet user table okay so here you can find 
the column is having name of id so this id is here the primary key and here in the refresh token table it is the foreign key okay so the same thing i have implemented or applied here okay and now let's move to the next point after creating the refresh token model i have also created another refresh token model to accept the request from the user for refresh token uh, endpoint api endpoint okay so you can see here this is the refresh token model okay this is the separate model and the next point is we need to add the this db set in the database context okay so here you can see inside the application db context i have added at line number 25 this is the refresh token okay this is the refresh token database model okay and after all these things we need to run this command first add migration command okay so you can run that add the migration command from here you need to go here inside the tool and from your node package manager and then package manager console and from here you can from here you can select the project where you want to update okay like or where you want to add the migration so here we have selected the web application api project which is already created the migration here so it will just add another migration here okay so i have done all these things so i will not run that command okay so after uh, like adding the migration you can run this command update database and then once you will update the database like execute the update database command then you will see this table created here with the name of refresh token okay but this table will not have any data in your case okay so now let's move to the third point now we need to generate access token so we need to create a method for generating the access token so you can see here i have created the method here okay and this method i have used here okay let me go to visual studio let me close this thing so now let's move to the account so inside account controller i have created the class at the same at the in the same control because i just want to use this method only for once not it will not be used it will be used either in the refresh token endpoint and the account controller endpoint so i have not like uh, created any other library for that but if you want for more management then you can you can do that okay so here you can see uh let me recheck again which are the what was the class name so generate access token class okay so let's move to visual studio so you can see here generate access token class okay here it is so this is the generate access token class so you can see here let me explain here okay so here the first thing what we are getting is the user role okay and according to that user role we have created the claims here auth claims and again we have added here the role in the auth claims okay so now here we are created the sign in key using our JWT secret which we have defined in the app app, app config sex app settings sorry not in the launch setting uh, let me close this in the app settings dot json so here you can see this is our secret and we have we are using that secret here okay for getting the auth sign in key and here we have created the token inside token we have uh, we are getting the issuer from the app setting again okay this is the valid issuer which we are getting and here also 
we are getting the audience from the same place here we are getting the expiration time so you can see here i have defined here expiration time here but i'm not currently using that okay i have i have used i have I have directly mentioned here the expression time as 10 minute okay so now let me do it more or less so that we can check it properly let me do it like 120 second or maybe maybe let's keep it um, 300 second for the five minute expression okay so again in the claim section i have assigned the claim here in the token and then here signed in credential so it is using basically hmx256 for generating the jwt okay and from here now in the refresh token model you can see i have also created the refresh token model which we had created here for accepting the parameter from the user as well as using the same like, like we can use also we have used also this method in for inside for data transferring the data from method to method so you can see here so inside the refresh token model i have this refresh token and here i am calling this method generate refresh token and i am passing the token dot id from here and user id from here from the user what we have got from this like from the request okay so let me again go to here generate refresh token so you can see after pressing f12 i have navigated it to from there from like at generate refresh token so you can see here i am generating a random number okay and from that random number i here i have set like I, I am converting that render number as a base 64 string here and that uh, that string I have assigned into the token so basically this is the refresh token okay and here I have added the expiration time as 6 months for the refresh token and I am assi I have assigned that like run date time in UTC format here and I have also assigned the user id and the token id which we were getting from there okay and now here these two lines i have used for saving the refresh token into a database so all these things have been assigned to refresh token into a database and this line will be will save the refresh token into a database and this will again return the refresh token which we have created and from there you can see dot token value we are extracting so this is the basically token actual refresh token here so we are getting that assigned into the refresh token and the token we are what we have created here so from here we are calling the right token it is basically inside internal method of jwt security token handler okay and we are using security token handler to write the token and also we have passed the expiration time of the access token not the refresh token this is the expiration time of access token okay because we are getting this token and the valid to time okay and valid to time is basically this is the valid to time okay the five minute or 300 second you can see you can we can say okay and so that's all so this like this we are creating the refresh token during the login as well as during the refresh token api calling so now okay and so now let's move to the next method what we need to create so after creating the generate access token we also need to create like we need to get the user from the access token like when we create the refresh token so before that we need to go to here this is step six so let me explain this thing from here you can see with this like step five as well as the step four will be explained okay so let me go to step six so you can see here this is the end point of refresh token 
okay this is the control sorry the action method of refresh token so here you can see this is the refresh token model we are accepting basically the only two things from the user the token and the refresh token token is basically the access token and refresh token is the refresh token which we are returning during the login to the user okay and expression is no need not to be passed okay and here only need two things access token and the refresh token and here like once we pass because you can see here this method is anonymous okay so anyone can use this without any authorization user just need to pass the access token and refresh token okay and here you can see from that refresh token dot token that means this is this is the access token from that access token we are getting the user and this is the actual method what we have implemented this is bit tricky little bit tricky part okay to implement so keep this thing in mind whenever you are going to like implement or when you are going to use okay so let me explain this to you okay so again we are getting here our sign in key and the secret key okay so for the auth sign key we are getting the symmetric secret key and basically we have used the utf8 encoding okay and the key we are getting the ascii encoding okay and here you can see that validate user sign in key is true so this is basically the total validation parameters which we have passed here okay and okay so you can see here so this is the validation parameter i have created this and make sure to keep this thing as false validate lifetime otherwise the refresh token will not work okay okay and now here we have created a security token so basically we here this is the line validate token okay this is a part of token handler what we have created here the ability socket security token handler okay from the token handler we are verifying the token okay validating the token okay this is basically the internal method of jwt security token handler but always keep one thing in mind to keep this thing as false validate lifetime otherwise you after expression of token uh, like it will not be it cannot be validated okay so now again in the next line at 272 we are we are creating like we are we have converted the security token as JWT, jwt security token and from here you can see like we have checked the token generation um, generation method as you can see we are checking that security token should not be null as well as the algorithm should be hmac 256 which we have used the same uh, algorithm for generating the access token during the login okay and here we have passed the invariant culture ignore case for the string comparison okay and from here we are getting the actual username from the principal from this principal we have got the value of username or you can see the email id and then we are passing or we are getting the complete data of user from here okay by comparing the two tables inside the database okay and now we have returned this back to the controller okay so let's let me click on here and let me go to again the refresh token so you can see here we got the value of user from the access token and now what we are doing we are checking or validating the token from our database so you can see here the first thing we are checking whether user is 
uh, like not null okay and then we have this method to validate the refresh token here so you can see now inside that what we are doing we are fetching the user data or the refresh token data from the database in the descending order okay and we are also like you can see here we are checking that like according to the uh, and we are also like putting the descending order according to the expiration time of the refresh token okay so we are only selecting the first one in the descending order the expiration time and again we are here checking the refresh token user should not be null okay what we are getting from the database and the user id the, of the refresh token should be matching with the user id right which we like from the from the whatever we have got from the access token right and here it is uh, okay the refresh token so basically we use the refresh token to get the data from database and here you can see the third condition is we are checking the expiration time so expiration time should not be greater than the current time okay so okay if everything like is okay then we are returning true otherwise we are returning false so you can see here now we have got this thing here true okay and after getting this thing true okay uh, then we are like again generating the refresh token as well as the access token from here you can see again we have called the same method generate access token what we had called from the login okay so you can see here we are again calling the same refresh token and it will return us the refresh token as well as the access token so you can see here we have two reference one from the then create access token sorry one from the okay line number 54 for creating refresh token model uh, i mean this is the basically the login method okay you can see here at the right side inside the account controller this is the login and this is the refresh token method all the endpoint okay so now let's move to here refresh token endpoint okay so after uh, here again we have got the refresh token model here we, i mean we got the data uh, of refresh token as well as the access token and here again we are passing it into the token the this is basically the access token and in the refresh token this is the refresh token and we are just returning the expiration as well here and this expiration is for access token or the token not for the refresh token okay so now let's let me so uh, i have explained here the step six step five as well as the step four okay and now that's it so these are basically the six steps so you can apply i will also attach or give the link in the description for this uh, notepad as well okay so that you can understand everything okay so now let me demonstrate you how it is working okay so now let me go ahead to the visual studio into the visual studio and now let me run the project okay so let it run first So you can see here now our project have started. So now let me go to the postman. Okay. Now, now let me log in first. So you can see I have passed here the user. Okay. Let me click on send to login. So now as you can see it will do all the internal process and it will return us the token as well as the refresh token so you can see here we got the success true we got the token we got the refresh token and the expression time 
and expiration time is in UTC format and this is just the, the time of after 5 minutes because we have applied the 300 second expiration time for the access token so let me copy here okay and this end point is the authorized uh, end point okay so let me just remove it first from here let me click on send so you can see this is showing us an authorized again this is the older token earlier token and when i will send then it is also saying unauthorized so now let me again the latest token which i have copied so once i will click on send then you can see we got the data okay so now let me okay let me show you that what uh, like the refresh token what we had just created here okay so this is let me navigate to the sql server so you can see here we are having only 20 records here and once i will refresh this or again execute then we are getting now the 21 record so this is the current generated refresh token okay which uh, this refresh token is generated uh, when we logged in currently okay so you can see that we have the refresh token and using this refresh token we can validate our user okay you can see here is the user id and whenever we will like validate the refresh token so we are selecting the token in the descending order with and according to the expired date time okay and okay so now let me move again to the uh, to the postman so that we can understand the clear instruction okay so now let's wait for two to five minutes so that we can check whether the token is expired or not so that we can generate the refresh token after the expiration of access token so let me again click on send well okay so again it's uh, still valid so let's wait for more time because we have set the uh, expression time of five minute okay so i am pausing the video for some time okay so you can see guys here like on it's it's passed like five minutes have passed now okay so let me hit the send button again so now you can see the we are getting the unauthorized okay that means our token have expired now okay so now let's move to the refresh token here okay so what we will do here i will copy the login the token or the access token here and i will paste it here in the token section okay now i have paste i have just copied now let me again copy the copy the refresh token okay and i will put it here in the refresh token okay so now let me and you can see we don't have any authorization here okay so now let me again put it here like not okay so now let me click on send okay so now you can see we got the new access token as well as the refresh token and let me copy it here so i have copied the access token and let me put it here okay so now i have i am going to use the access token what we, which we have got from the refresh token api okay now let me click on send 
so you can see here okay now we are again able to access the data without login okay so what we have used we have used the refresh tech on api to get the new token to access the api so like this we can use or implement the refresh token in our project or you can use whatever it will be required okay so basically refresh token is very very important thing to be implemented in any project okay because it it like provides more flexibility in the application as well as the security as well in the application so basically this refresh token is the like mandatory part whenever you are going to implement any transactional or payment related any project or any api okay so keep always keep that thing in mind to do use the refresh token api or implement the refresh token api in your project okay so in this video okay let me show you one more thing like also i can show you that you can see here we have the only 21 data okay so now again let me refresh this thing and now you can see we have got the 22nd row okay so this is the token and you can also verify it here in the refresh set token section okay so this is the same ending with zmn equal sign okay and again you can see so this is the token what we are returning in the api so like this you can implement okay the refresh token okay thank you guys thank you for watching this uh, tutorial and don't forget to subscribe don't forget to subscribe the channel okay and if you have any any query or any any suggestions so don't hesitate to put your suggestions or comments in the comment section okay i will be happy to answer you okay thank you guys thank you for watching